Week 23, Day 155, On Broadening Your Horizons. What do you know of history, biology, evolution, ethics, and the thousand and one branches of knowledge? But, you object, I fail to see how such things can aid me in the writing of a romance or a poem. Ah, but they will, not so much directly as by subtle reaction. They broaden your thought, lengthen out your vistas, drive back the bounds of the field in which you work. They give you your philosophy, which is like unto no other man's philosophy, force you to original thought. Jack London Jack London's advice is for writers who want to improve their craft, but it can also apply to any other domain. Expanding your knowledge and exposing yourself to different disciplines is not only a fantastic way to become a more educated person, but also a powerful way to become more successful. Random bits of information from one domain can help you achieve success in another. Likewise, experience gained in one field can provide the foundation for another endeavor. I'm an inquisitive person by nature and I'm always interested in learning about new things from various domains. I often randomly stumble upon powerful life lessons while learning about fields that are completely unrelated to personal development. For example, rock climbing has taught me the value of taking things one step at a time. When climbing a difficult route, you focus only on the next handhold or foothold. You slowly advance, with your vision limited to the immediate surroundings. The same approach is effective when working on your goals. Instead of worrying whether you get to the top, you focus on what's right in front of you. The experience and skills I gained when climbing are now useful to me in every other sport, and thanks to that, I can learn them more quickly. On a completely unrelated note, the experience of off-road driving has taught me the power of momentum. It's difficult to gain traction with nothing but sand under your wheels, but once you start, you can traverse difficult terrain. If you stop, it will be hard to start yet again. I don't think I need to tell you how much that applies to the world of personal development. Draw parallels between different fields and strive to always expand your knowledge. Becoming erudite can dramatically improve your ability to learn quickly and achieve success with many different endeavors. Day 156, On Wanting What We Already Have one wonderful way to tame our tendency to always want more is to persuade ourselves to want the things we already have. William B. Irvine I'm a follower of intermittent fasting, a type of eating in which you regularly alternate between eating and abstaining from food. In addition to daily fasts of 16 to 20 hours, I sometimes fast for 40 hours or more. When you fast for such a long time, your senses are heightened. Smells are more intense and flavors more explosive. In this state, you learn to want things you already have. A simple apple tastes like heaven and is more than sufficient as a food source. I don't need an apple pie, a caramelized apple sprinkled with cinnamon, or apple pancakes covered with apple horseradish sauce. You can persuade yourself to want the things you have by abstaining from them for a period of time or imagining they're no longer available for you. It doesn't apply just to food. Things can disappear in a blink of an eye, including your house, car, clothes, family members, spouse, a comfortable bed, a warm shower, or your health. When you feel the threat of losing something you hold dearly, you'll start wanting it with more intensity than ever before. As a result, you'll work harder to keep it in your life and stop craving other things. The applications of this practice for self-discipline are endless and go beyond the example with fasting. Stop driving for a few days and imagine you'll always have to commute by bus or bike. Suddenly you might realize that you actually love your current car and there's no need to strain your finances and buy a new one. Imagine, and I'm sorry for the horrid mental picture, that your loved one died in a car accident right after you had an argument with them. How terrible would you feel if it was your anger, and not your expression of love, that would accompany them in their last moments? Wouldn't such a morbid reminder make you less prone to anger attacks and more likely to exert willpower to not shout at your partner, child, parent, or other loved one? In many aspects, your life is already incredible. You just need to remind yourself that you can lose it, 
so that you can relearn its value for you. Day 157, on remembering death. Remembering that I'll be dead soon is the most important tool I've ever encountered to help me make the big choices in life. Because almost everything, all external expectations, all pride, all fear of embarrassment or failure, these things just fall away in the face of death, leaving only what is truly important. Remembering that you are going to die is the best way I know to avoid the trap of thinking you have something to lose. You are already naked. There is no reason not to follow your heart. Steve Jobs In the face of death, what does pride or fear of embarrassment mean? What will you regret more in your last days, not going after your goals out of a fear of failure or voluntarily putting yourself in uncomfortable situations that might result in embarrassment in exchange for eventually making your dreams come true? It's not a particularly pleasant practice to remember that you're going to die. But it can serve as a powerful reminder that, in the grand scheme of things, there's little you can lose and a lot you can gain by chasing after your dreams, and on the other hand, a lot to lose and little to gain by not shaping your life the way you want it to be just because you're afraid of failure or embarrassment. Day 158, On Learning from the Greats You do not win in a big fight by any patent device. There is not any way by which you can turn your hand and conquer in a time of great trial. You have got to conquer as your fathers and grandfathers conquered before you. You have got to conquer as strong men have conquered in every struggle of history, and draw on whatever fund of courage, of resolution, of hardihood, of iron will that you have at your command, and you can conquer only if you draw on just those qualities. Theodore Roosevelt Whatever problems you're facing today, Somebody has already faced them in the past. Perhaps not in the exact same way as you, but close enough that the story of this person will resonate with you. That's why I find biographies, particularly autobiographies, so inspirational. You're getting to know the stories of great individuals and discover that no matter what period of history they took place in, people always employed the same or similar ways to achieve success. What's so powerful about it is that you can apply their lessons in your own life and have a reasonable chance that if it worked for them, it will work for you. It might sound like I'm opposed to the use of self-help literature, obviously I'm not, otherwise I wouldn't write my books, but I strongly believe that you're often better served by reading biographies of people you want to emulate, rather than yet another generic book about personal development. And yes, you have my blessing to close this book now. If you have a good biography waiting for you on the bookshelf, here are some biographies I strongly recommend, listed in no particular order. 1. Losing My Virginity and Finding My Virginity by Richard Branson. 2. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. 3. Elon Musk by Ashley Vance. 4. How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Win Big by Scott Adams. 5. On Writing by Stephen King. 6. How to Get Rich by Felix Dennis. 7. Let My People Go Surfing by Yvonne Chouinard. Day 159, On Having Options. Always have options. Options are a primary source of power. Dave Kekish. Here's an easy way to sabotage yourself, limit your thinking to black or white. It's either A or B. You either do it or you don't. Having only two options takes away your power to choose and makes you susceptible to decision avoidance. This, in turn, makes you less likely to introduce important changes in your life. Rarely, if ever, are there only two options. For example, let's imagine you're now working 9 to 5, but you'd like to become an entrepreneur. Black or white thinking makes you believe that you only have two options. Keep your job or give notice and start your business. With only two, opposite, directions to choose from, you can't make it any harder for you to decide. What about continuing your career while building a side business? How about asking your boss if you can work from your home office? What about changing your form of employment to become a contractor instead of an employee? What about finding a job in a startup that is looking for a co-founder with your experience? Suddenly you have other options, 
and those options can empower you to introduce a change instead of having to choose between the status quo and making an irresponsible decision. Whenever you catch yourself thinking that you only have two options, think again. Black or white thinking is mental laziness. Always find at least one more alternative and give yourself a better chance of making the right decision. Day 160, On Deliberate Practice Doing things we know how to do well is enjoyable, and that's exactly the opposite of what deliberate practice demands. Instead of doing what we're good at, we insistently seek out what we're not good at. Then we identify the painful, difficult activities that will make us better and do those things over and over. After each repetition, we force ourselves to see, or get others to tell us, exactly what still isn't right so we can repeat the most painful and difficult parts of what we've just done. Jeff Colvin Concentrating on what you aren't good at instead of exclusively doing what you do well can dramatically speed up your progress rate, particularly in a complex endeavor that has many moving pieces. It's tempting to stick to doing what you're good at and ignore the rest. It feels enjoyable, and if it's a skill you can show off to others, that's another reason to stick to what you do well. However, ultimately you can find little growth in repeating, over and over again, what you've already mastered, while other aspects of your performance leave something to be desired. For example, in rock climbing one of my weaknesses is climbing routes that rely heavily on finger strength. I could choose to ignore any routes of this nature but doing so would mean dramatically slowing down my progress, if not bringing it to a halt. Even though it gives me great pleasure to climb routes with easier handholds and climbing the ones requiring finger strength is often a nightmare, I know that ultimately, it's the uncomfortable routes that will make me a better climber. Focusing on your strengths and ignoring or bypassing what you aren't good at is a form of instant gratification. Meanwhile, identifying the painful. Difficult activities that will address your weaknesses requires sacrifice, but ultimately leads to bigger rewards in the future. Go with the latter. Day 161 On Addressing the Real Mistakes When expert putters miss, they don't say, I am a terrible putter. They say, I picked the wrong target. John Elliott Proclaiming that you suck simply because you made a mistake is not only being unfair to yourself. You also rob yourself of the opportunity to improve, and increase the risk of developing learned helplessness. Learning can't happen if you believe that improvement is beyond your control. Yet, that's precisely what you're doing when you're pointing the finger at yourself instead of at a specific action that you took. Imagine an instructor who tells their student that they're a terrible tennis player. What does such kind of feedback accomplish besides demotivating the student? The only effective way to teach is to deliver specific feedback pertaining to a concrete aspect of their game, not by criticizing the person playing it. Do what expert putters do. Instead of wrongly criticizing yourself, address the real mistakes in the form of specific actions you took that didn't result in the desired outcome. 